Welcome back to another episode of Keep Ups with Canadian Women's Soccer. So, I made my roster video earlier in the week, saying who I thought might appear at the Olympics, and then Canada Soccer decided to actually drop their roster for the camp. And I was like, okay, guess I gotta refilm. I mean, I was basically right with who'd be there. Just, there were one or two injuries I wasn't sure about, and I'll mention them later on in the video. Down to business. We have 18 players that we can select to go to the Olympic Games, and there are 28 players at the camp. It looks like there won't be anyone who comes outside of the camp, except if someone makes a miraculous recovery, such as Diana Matheson. So if we look at the 28 invited, there are probably three or four who are there for just experience. They're not really competing for a spot necessarily. There are probably seven who you could say would be in the starting 11 for sure. There are a couple who are potentials to be in the starting 11. Uh, a couple who will definitely see some quality game time, and then others who have to prove themselves to be in that 18. So I would say locked in. We have Steph LaBay. La um, she's definitely one of the two goalkeepers who will be going if she stays healthy. Just her consistency and her experience is something you can't overlook. And then Buchanan, quality player, world class, no way that she's not going if she's healthy. Zdorsky and Giles are also excellent center backs, and I see all three of those center backs going in. Chapman, quality outside left back. Uh, she's been playing great in the NWSL and in the Canada games, so I see her being an easy left back starting position. Lawrence uh, starting at right back, potentially, but depending on how they want to shift things around, she might move into the midfield or forwards. Uh, Desiree Scott is our go-to holding midfield. I think we need to find some more depth there in holding mid, but that's something I can talk about later with some other players and how they might show a depth role. Fleming as one of our attacking mids, um, and then that leaves in another spot open for an attacking mid. And then we have our three forwards, so obviously Christine Sinclair is our attacking one, and uh, Becky seems to be the go-to for the right wing. So that leaves the left wing as the other open slot for the le uh, starting eleven. So look at who our quality players are who may make that starting 11 as well. We have Deanne Rose and Nichelle Prince who are probably duking it out for that left wing spot. The person who's kind of interesting for me would be Adriana Leon. She was out with a broken foot and had surgery and hopes that she'd be back in time for the Olympic roster. So this is someone you have to keep an eye out because it didn't seem like she would actually be back in time and yet here she is being called up for the June camp, and this will be an excellent spot for her to prove herself. So as mentioned, these three forwards, as well as Evelyn Viennes, I think, is someone you can't overlook. Uh, she is an excellent substitute for Christine Sinclair up top and has production, um, and this may arguably put her over the top compared to Jordan Heidema. Um, so that's something I'll talk about in a minute. Viennes is another one who may be in that 18 roster. The goalies is probably the most clear-cut choice in a way. We have a lot of depth there and Sabrina D'Angelo being back and being healthy uh, and Aaron McLeod showing that she's fantastic in her game in Orlando, but it seems that Kaylin Sheridan, if she's healthy, and Steph LeBay are the two go-tos, uh, even in Bev Priestman's mind. And then the back line is mostly crystal clear, so as I mentioned, you have your three center backs in uh, Zdorsky, Giles, and Buchanan. It'll be interesting to see who the tandem of the starting two is. I definitely think there'll be some rotation in there, but I'm seeing maybe a Buchanan-Giles combo, depending on how their chemistry goes in the June games. If not, it might go back to buchanan Zdorsky, but I honestly think I prefer Giles in center back than Zdorsky, just based on consistency and clearances and all that fun stuff. <laughs> the outside backs, there is a spot up for grabs potentially. So as mentioned, Chapman is the go-to left back, um, Ashley Lawrence the go-to right back, and then I would say Riviere and Carl have proved themselves the most as excellent young uh, outside backs, but with Lawrence shifting up more in the field into midfield and uh, attacking, Riviere's played that right back role more than Carl. So I think that kind of gives her the edge there uh, compared to Carl. And since you can only take 18, it's unlikely that you would take four outside backs to an Olympic Games. But as mentioned, with Ashley Lawrence's uh, ability to play all over the field, it is a potential that they actually just slaughter full time into mids forwards and then have three outside backs in Carl, Riviere, and Chapman. The midfield is, I would say, a mess in terms of figuring out who is going to be there. Um, so Scott is our holding mid, and Fleming is our attacking mid, uh, and so 
someone who has chemistry, I think, is Sarah Stratagakis, who's kind of interesting to watch in there. And Jordan Leistra also has had a couple of attempts playing with Fleming. Um, the one that has the best chemistry would be Quinn. Uh, they have performed exceptionally at the international level. However, they are dealing with an Achilles injury, so it is unsure whether they will be there. Um, if they are healthy, definitely see them slotting in with Fleming in that midfield tandem. Uh, the attacking forward, so as mentioned, Sinclair Pop, Becky on the right, and then I would go with Nichelle on the left, potentially for playmaking, but I think Rose is a better finisher. Honestly, I definitely think they will split the minutes about half and half in that tournament. It's hard to pick one. Uh, I have to Rose, I guess. <laughs> So that's my starting 11 in there. And as mentioned, Sheridan's the backup and the back line. We have the subs figured out for defense. Midfield, the subs, I can't even, I can barely figure out the starting 11 for the midfield. So I don't know how I'm going to figure out the subs. If we did have Quinn healthy, then I would say one of Lishro or Shredagakis can make themselves a name. Uh, and because I see Bev only taking one or two midfield substitutes. So I think Schmidt, it's weird, Schmidt has a, is a good veteran experience option. However, they haven't really been performing too well at the current level compared to some of the other players potentially. Um, but with the lack of veterans on the team, it is an option that she will go and then there will be one other younger midfielder option. So if I have Deanne Rose as my starting and then I have one, two in Nichelle Prince as, and Viennes as my subs up top. And then I have three, four in Schmidt and either Lishro or Stratagakis. Um, I can't decide which. They have different things. As I said, Stratagakis has that chemistry with Fleming, but Lishro has more veteran experience now playing in the NWSL. It's going to be a tight race to the end, but I could see maybe Lishro pulling out in that race. But Sarah's my homegirl, so I can't say that. So then that's 3-4, and then you have 5-6 in your defensive subs, uh, in Jodorowsky, in and Riviere, and then 7 is the goalkeeper. Okay, so you could argue here that we're happy with our 7 subs, because we have our 1 goalkeeper, 2 defensive players, 2 midfielders, and 2 forwards. But then you think about different structures, and you could have 3 center backs, and you could have your 2 outside backs playing more up the field. Or you could have Lawrence slotting into the midfield, which means maybe we don't need as many midfielder subs as we originally thought. So if you take out Schmidt or Lichro, this means you could have an extra spot available for someone who's a forward, since forwards often are the most subs. So this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to take you through a couple options, a couple subs that may potentially be seen instead of maybe Schmidt or Lichro, depending on how that midfielder is performing, or if Quinn is in fact injured. Potentially could be Leon or Heidema. And Heidema is the one that scored that game winner to send them to the Olympics, but I don't know if she's playing at a level where she can clinch a spot. It's definitely something where she's going to have to get her confidence up, and then Leon is going to have to get healthy. And then you have someone like Carl who also deserves a spot, and literally figuring out that 18th spot is going to be some tough business for Bev all I'm gonna say and that's why those other players coming into camp like Bianca St. George and Chloe Lacasse I don't know if they'll get their first senior camp appearance just because Bev's gonna have to figure out who does she want her starting 11 who she want depth and it's really hard this close to a tournament to try and make a name for yourself and so other notable injuries if you guys are wondering uh, and why Riley Foster's not there we have the depth at goalkeeper but I believe she was injured at the end of season with Liverpool and then Lindsay Agnew announced just I think last week that she broke her foot um, just before the start of season, basically, with the NC Courage, so it's tough luck for her. And then Diana Matheson, as mentioned, will likely not see any field time at the Olympics, and at age 37, I don't know if we've seen the last of her. Hope not, because honestly, my favorite player. Let me know what you guys think the starting 11 is going to be, and who the seven super subs are at the Olympic tournament, and then we will get to see how this compares to Bev Priestman's decision, which will come about 10 days after the June camp. So as mentioned, leave a comment, a like, subscribe, and look forward to future videos where we talk about the roster of the Canadian women's soccer team, as well as looking at other aspects of Canadian soccer and how we can develop it for the women's side of the game.